Hey everyone, welcome to Web Sleuth YouTube Live. My name is Tricia Griffith, and I have on hand with me our wonderful executive producer, Insightful One, and we are welcoming back Little Texan, our expert on the Duggar family. And there has been an explosive docu-series just released on Amazon Prime called Shiny Happy People. And it is about the Duggars and the TLC, uh, you know, doc, uh, the, the TLC show, 19 Kids and Counting. It's also about IBLP, which is the Institute in Basic Life Principles by Bill Gothard. We're going to get into just this shocking information that has come on tonight. And I, I'm not trying to, you know, do clickbait here or to do something that isn't true. I, I'm telling you, I'm just so stunned at what has come out. But first, we need to talk about something that Ping talked about last night, but I want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. There have been women missing in Oregon, in Port, around the Portland area. I think it's six of them. And the police are saying no serial killer. Now, I don't know if you remember the, uh, was it the Green River serial killer that Ann yes. Rule wrote, wrote about in uh, in Washington? Yeah, I, I think, yeah. Very Ridgeway? Yeah, exactly. And everybody was saying, oh, no, this is, or the police were saying, no, there's no serial killer, because it was mostly prostitutes that were missing. Mm -hmm. And it took a long time for the police to come around and say, yeah, this is a serial killer. However, they are claiming, and this is true, that you can have a bunch of people missing in the same area and it can have nothing to do with serial killing. Absolutely true. So what we're going to do right now is um, just to get us up to date on this, I'm going to show you uh, something from, let's see here. This is from Coin6. Uh, this is in Portland. This is CBS. And we're going to start with uh, Jolie Jones because the police have come out with a statement about these women. And we're going to listen to this. I'm going to have to stop it uh, at least once to discuss to keep within the YouTube fair use rules. So here we go, my darlings. Just stand by and I will be right back. And we're going to go play with this right now. Here we go. Well, Wayne, we here at COIN and police have been hearing mounting concerns from the community that these six deaths may be connected. But today, Portland police are setting the record straight, saying at this point in time, with the information they have, this speculation is not supported by the facts. Widespread rumors have been buzzing around the Rose City after six women were found dead in the greater Portland area within the last four months. With several of the deaths labeled suspicious, some took to social media to speculate on whether the cases could be connected to an unknown serial killer. But today, the Portland Police Bureau says the rumors are unfounded, stating in part, quote, these decisions have led to some anxiety and fear in our community, and we want to provide reassurance that the speculation is not supported by the facts available at this point. PBB has no reason to believe these six cases are connected. The unsupported speculation swirled after the remains of Kristen Smith were found on February 19th off Southeast Flavel Road, followed by the discovery of Joanna Speaks' body in rural Clark County April 8th. Two weeks later, Charity Perry was found near Ainsworth State Park. The same day, an unidentified woman was found dead near Southeast Flavel and I-205. And a week later, the body of Bridget Webster was discovered in rural Polk County. And on May 7th, Ashley Reel's body was found in rural Clackamas County. Today, police pointed out the cause of Kristen Smith's death is still unknown. And a Okay, anyway, um, you see what the police are saying. Uh, you're going to hear a little bit more in the report about uh, the cause of death of some of these these women. So let's continue. Again, this is uh, KOIN6 in Portland, and we appreciate their reporting. Here we go. Medical examiner found no foul play was involved in the unknown woman's death. With the six cases spanning across agencies and jurisdictions, PBB tells us they are communicating with other agencies to investigate the possibility of a connection in these cases, but says that doesn't mean a connection actually exists. Saying, we ask that our community be aware of the facts about these cases before sharing speculation. And going on to say that PBB assures the community that if they learn of any real danger, they will notify the public about it. 
And Portland police say they will continue to coordinate with other law enforcement agencies to ensure they're doing all they can to bring justice for these victims. But because these investigations are ongoing, they did decline our interview request today. So we will continue to follow this and bring you any updates for all six of these cases as we get them. Reporting live in Portland, I'm Joelle Jones, Queen 6 News. Yeah. Welcome to Okay, so uh, they're saying there's absolutely, absolutely no uh, serial killer. These are not connected. Now, I want to cut the police some slack here. They're still investigating, and they may find out and change their mind later. They really might. So let's not let's not jump to a conclusion and make it worse for people like us that like to look into these things. Because what happens, as you know, the uh, bad actors on YouTube make life hell for the good people, like on websleuths.com, people here, YouTube channels that are the good actors. So just let's keep an open mind here. And uh, I can't imagine the police would withhold anything if they can show that it's a serial killer. They'd want to catch him just as much as we do. So... There we go, everybody. And hi to everybody in chat. I think I saw Beth B, LMS83, Zelda, Zelda. Also PB and J, Emily, Narb, Mama, Mia, JDR, uh, Abeli, or Abel, Terry, Queer, Bjorn, Homequest. Good to see you. Uh, uh, Jeannie Phipps, JDR, Laura G, Lily and Gail. Hello. I saw Shad, the floating head, a little bit earlier. Marilyn Landis. And uh, let's see, Annie Hall, NZ. Mama Mia, LMS, and Denise R. Good to see you, my dear. Marilyn Landis, Candy Williams, uh, Beth B, Mary L, Laura G, Denise R. Ping the Router is here, everybody. Jade Famous Artist, it is so good to see you. Lindy Bridges as well. Gambler 77713. Tia is here. Melissa McCurdy, Lindy Bridges. Uh, let's see. Cindy Daughtry, Terry Queer, Kathy Lynch. And have I forgotten anybody? I hope not. If I have Carol Donaldson, good to see you, my dear. And if I have, please forgive me. I'll try and catch you a little bit later. Hi, Kat. Glad you made it. Okay. Everybody with us tonight, it, one of my favorite people. Uh, she goes by the name of Little Texan. Little Texan was actually one of our uh, first moderators for this live stream. Right, Little Texan? Oh, hold on. You're muted just a second. I think that's me. <laughs> there you go. Isn't that right, Little Texan? You were one of our very, very first moderators, right? That's right. And uh, you were also a moderator on websleuths.com. You were an incredible moderator. And uh, we became friends that way. And one thing that we uh, discovered in our friendship, that was the uh, foaming at the mouth that occurred when you and I would talk about the Duggars and 19 and counting. Because... Let me just start out by saying we're going to talk and reveal some of the real shocking stuff in the Amazon uh, documentary, the four-part documentary series. And if you can get Amazon Prime and watch just that and then cancel, it is well worth it. TLC, the learning channel, I, in my opinion, are as responsible as anybody because what they did was they took this family and did turn them into shiny, happy people, knowing full well that this family had horrible, abusive practices, okay? When Michelle Duggar was finished nursing a child, she'd toss it off to an 11-year-old, and that was their buddy, and they had to take care of the baby, okay? They homeschooled their kids. Now, not I stop with the homeschooling screaming at me. The homeschooling they did was not schooling. It was indoctrination, okay? It was all about science isn't science. <clears throat> science. There is no such things as million year fossils. And it was all about indoctrinating them into the hate culture. You know, uh, you know hate homosexuals, hate, hate anybody different than you, basically. And they didn't teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. What they taught were these ridiculous... Uh, un I mean, so far gone theories in science. It's not even science. You can't even 
can't even say that it's science. Their homeschooling was not schooling. So here you have, okay, this non-homeschooling family. They're keeping their kids home from school and the women do everything. And who's in charge? The man, Jim Bob, has his thumb on all of the women and the women have to mind their husbands. Okay. First of all, they have them do this courtship bull crap when they're like 14, 15, and then they marry really, really young and they start having babies. The man is the power of the house. The man determines in this particular cult that the Duggars belong to, and we're going to get into more of that. The man determines what the women wear, which is looks like pioneer stuff, because they admit that if, you know, boys see their flesh, they can't be trusted and they can't be controlled. So it's up to the women to cover themselves up or else basically it's not the man's fault or the boy's fault if they lose control. OK, it's that type of crap. The women have to wear their hair long and in braids and the women have to be ready for their husbands sexually, no matter how they feel no matter how they feel. And this is what Michelle Duggar and that voice, honest to God, when you hear that voice, watch out because it's like this. And it's just so, oh, I just love my girls. And it's like, they have to be the husbands. They're the, you know, the slaves for the husbands. And oh my God, it makes me crazy. This is what their mother was teaching them. TLC knew all of this. They knew it. They knew what Bill Gothard and his ridiculous cult was teaching and in this documentary, they said something that just shocked me. And normally, when people say stuff like this, I roll my eyes and go, oh, brother, not in this case. In this documentary, they prove that Bill Gothard and his, let me get the exact name here, because heaven forbid I say it wrong, IBLP, Institute in Basic Life Principles, their goal was world domination. I'm not being flippant. I'm not exaggerating. You get them. It's always the men, of course, that go out into politics. Always the men. The men get elected, you know, to the school boards, to the local, uh, you know, local state legislative bodies. And then they go for the big, big one. And they actually had one of their people. Yes, one of their people. I don't know if you remember him. His name was uh, U.S. Representative Madison Cawthorn. OK, and he was 27 years old. He served one term in Congress until guess what? All these women came forward and talked about how they were basically attacked sexually, how he was aggressive with them sexually, because one of the things that this documentary series proves, and I agree with it, is in this cult, they are raising little predators. And it is shocking how TLC could not be held accountable for creating this myth of the Duggars. And these women are horribly abused and they made them smile and made them happy. And that is TL, that's all on TLC. But I guess you could also look at it like, at least we got to see what TLC was doing and the truth is now coming out. And uh, Little Texan, you are an expert on this because uh, you're one of the smartest people I know. And you have a, a a job that requires your brain to be like in the top 1% of the people of the world. I mean, really, you are brilliant. And you have followed the Duggars since day one. Uh, go ahead. I, I know I'm just going off on a rant here, but we want to hear from you. Uh, finish up the, the the description of the Duggars, that because I, I know there's a lot more that I've missed. But go ahead and let's describe the Duggars, and then we're going to talk about Bill Gothard and this docu series. Okay, thank you, Tricia. I really appreciate you inviting me on, and I'm definitely not that smart, but thank you. That's yes, very you smart. Are. I'm really not. <laughs> um, okay. So the Duggars. So yes, everyone knows there are 19 um, children, probably know that by now. Um, the children have well, about half of them, roughly half, I think are married now and have children of their own and children on the way. And one was just born the other day. And I think they announced it just as kind of a distraction to this documentary coming out. Um, also, as an aside, the Duggars have also, uh, Michelle and Jim Bob have also put out some sort of canned statement about how this documentary was terrible and it was an attack on Christianity 
that is um, interesting given that their daughter Jill and their niece Amy were in it and both are to my knowledge still very devout Christians so this was certainly not an attack on Christianity this is an attack on a cult that is well deserved um, yes they were raised uh, it, it's not really that the homeschooling you know as you pointed out this isn't about homeschooling this is not normal homeschooling this was about isolation this was about keeping them completely cut off from the outside world no television no radio they could only watch gothard approved videos things like that um and i think the people who were brought into this cult or who were attracted to this cult one thing you could kind of get throughout were people like Michelle and Jim Bob. Michelle was the youngest of seven, got married at 17. Um, Jim Bob was 19. He had an alcoholic father. Um, he was in pretty much abject poverty growing up a lot of the time. Um, his good friend, Jim Holt, who was also in the documentary, he had a series of abusive stepfathers. These are the kind of people that cults prey on. Problem is, these guys get into it and then they just run with it. So, you know, Jim Bob gave his children no choice um, to, but to follow this. Oh, that's right. And one thing that um, they talk about, and we're going to jump around here a little bit. After Josh was discovered to be um, downloading uh, Child P, mm -hmm. they had to cancel 19 Kids and Counting. And they brought up a new show. And that show, uh, God, do you remember what it was called, Little Texan? Uh, Jill and Jessa Counting On. Yeah. And what yes. they did, and I think it was, I can't remember if it was Jill or Jessa, but the day she got married, you know, that was a big moneymaker on TLC, one of the big moneymakers, when there was a baby or they got married. And when one of, it was either Jill or Jessa got married, she said in the documentary, she's literally going through the kitchen at, you know, after they filmed the ceremony and her father stops her and says, sign this. And she signs it and doesn't know what it is. Well, it's the contract for counting on mm -hmm. and in it, they get paid nothing. Right. Little Texan. That's right. They get paid nothing and they are forced to work you know, nonstop. And their dad takes all the money. And yeah, let's, we're, like I said, we're going to jump around a little bit. Let's go to, let's jump to Josh right now. Um, tell us what happened with Josh, little Texan. And then I want to comment on what Kibby said here. Okay, sure. Um, content warning, trigger warning, probably yes. people know that, <laughs> but that. just in case, um, yeah, some, I won't go into anything graphic, obviously, but just for people to be aware that what he he's a despicable human being so mm -hmm. be aware uh okay so josh married anna when he was very young i think some one of the things he was 20 21 something like that she was 19 or 20. um one of the things that i think was really interesting in the documentary and something i i didn't know i did know that he had been uh, dating slash engaged to Kaylee Holt, um, which was the Holt's uh, oldest daughter. I, I knew that. That had come out over the years. I didn't know some of the really sinister backstory where uh, when they found out about Josh, um, uh, how do I say this you with the content abusing, learning? Abusing his sisters. Abusing his sisters. Um, that they said, well, hold on. What about our daughter? Well, when were you planning to tell us about this? And Michelle basically said, well, we weren't planning to tell you about it. Um, we were going to wait until the kids got married. And then Josh was going to confess to Kaylee, like during their wedding or, or after their wedding, during their wedding night or sometime during their marriage. Oh. Uh, can we stop right there? Because I, mm -hmm. I want to bring up a point, a great point. Mm -hmm. The Holtz were the best friends of the Duggars. And there, uh, Josh was born, and then like a few days later, their daughter was born. So they kind of already wanted them to get married, okay? And Bob Holt, Holt and is it Billy? Is that mm -hmm. her name? That they had no idea that Josh had done any of this. This was in 2002. And we're talking 2014, 2015, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And so 
they didn't know Josh had been abusing his sisters, right? They didn't know. And so what did they do? What did the Holtz do when they found out? Well, so they're tricky because they they did know back in the day. That's why it got broken off. But they didn't know the extent. So Josh had come to them and sort of confessed, sort of like he sort of confessed to other things that he basically got caught doing by the mm -hmm. girls. Um, they didn't know the full extent. I think that, you know, what Jim Bob said was, oh, uh, the girls were asleep and there was some over the close touching because he's curious about girls. Mm -hmm. It was so much more than that. So much more sickening than even that. And that's what the, you know, the downplaying and what was interesting in the documentary, they also said that at one point Jim Bob said, we're going to take him, you know, to the authorities for molesting his sisters. And Michelle stopped him and said, don't you ever say that again, that he molested them. Oh my God. That was an interesting little tidbit as well. And there's so many of these, but please continue. Oh um, yeah. So the, the Holtz kind of, I think did help break off that engagement at that point, but the whole deal with Anna Keller Duggar uh, was that, you know, they had to kind of find somebody suitable because what they had told the Holtz along with, we weren't going to tell you when Josh was going to confess to Kaylee at some point in their marriage was they said, well, hold on. So you're saying that you would, you basically wanted Josh to marry our daughter to fix him, to sort of, you know, cure him or give him an outlet for these curiosities. And they, they admitted to the Holtz. Yes, that's pretty much exactly what we were hoping for. It is just absolutely unbelievable. So how did Josh and and the Duggars find Anna? Because Anna is like a cookie cutter of <laughs> um, of Michelle. And by the way, it was Bobby Holt. I apologize for getting the name wrong. But um, how did they find Anna? Uh, she was, I believe, they were, well, her family was also IBLP. They were from Florida or are from Florida originally. Um, they met at a homeschooling ATI. And when I say homeschooling again, just disclaimer, this is not normal homeschooling. This is cult homeschooling ATI Gothard conference, not, not, not normal stuff. Um, and they met there, I think at the, I don't know, concession stand or something, which kind of tracks if you think of Josh, but anyway, they, <laughs> they met there and Anna started praying that, you know, maybe he would be her husband. And then there's this whole backstory of where she told her dad and then her dad said, well, don't you say anything. You just keep praying to the Lord and all this. And <laughs> who knows what really went on back there, but they, um, they essentially, you know, Pa Keller, he pretty much just sold her off to the Duggars. I think he saw that they were getting famous. They were going to have this show or they had this show. And uh, he's also, they basically living in abject poverty and, in, you know, literal, there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer. But when I say trailer, I mean, he had a family with seven kids in like a trailer with wheels in Florida. Mm -hmm. Like they were poor. And, and so, so they, they, saw, they that. saw this as a big opportunity, probably. Mm hmm. And so, and eventually they married. I mean, what, how long did that take? Do, do you know any more of the backstory? Oh gosh, trying to remember. Um, that was quick. Uh, certainly they got married quickly. I mean, matter of months, you know, from it. What was weird was back when they filmed this, this was very early on. Anna didn't know that he was going to propose. Not, I mean, these girls always say they don't know, but it was almost like they didn't really have a courtship. And I know these courtships are very heavily chaperoned and very heavily guarded. And, you know, you're not really spending much time with the other person. But usually there's at least some sort of like courting period. There really didn't seem to be much of one with them. It was sort of like they kind of knew of each other. She prayed about him. His parents probably said, this is the new wife we have picked out for you. And then it was like he went down to Florida for her birthday and then just proposed marriage. <laughs> so she genuinely looked shocked. I don't think she's that good of an actress. I think she was truly shocked. And her body language is fascinating in those old videos. Like she can't get far enough away from him. <laughs> really? Oh, I've got to go back and watch. That's fascinating. Wow. So they do this bizarre proposal. And then he is, first of all, he's outed mm -hmm. as being on Ashley Madison. Tell us a little bit about that. Remember when Josh? Oh yeah. Down? So yeah. 
okay, let me think. How, yeah, so that was around 2015. So that was kid number five or six. So they have mm -hmm. seven total. And um, so right after the news broke to the world, um, because In Touch Weekly got the information about the prior um, molestation and abuse of uh, four sisters and an unknown fifth girl um, who was not a family member to our knowledge. And thankfully, we don't know who that is, but there were five victims uh, back in 2003, 2004, those, those years. That came out in 2015 to the public. Uh, right around, around that time, shortly thereafter, the Ashley Madison scandal kind of broke nationwide and his name came up there. And then uh, Danica Dillon, I think her name was, um, an adult star, <laughs> uh, came forward and said she had been a victim of his, you know, that those charges were later dropped against him. But that all sort of came out. And then the the fan world, the, the real true diehard fans of the Duggars, like the people who actually like these people or their other cult members, they seem to be more horrified by the Ashley Madison cheating on his wife thing than on the, you know, child abuse. It's um, the molestation. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what's shocking. Ashley Madison was a website that basically came out and said, hey, you want to have an affair? Come find somebody on here. It was um, hacked and all the names of the clients of Ashley Madison were posted and Josh happened to be one of them. So he's cheating on his wife with a a sex worker from Ashley Madison. Mm -hmm. OK, and and you're right. That was more appalling. But so now they and they cover this in the documentary. Uh, Josh is working at a car dealership and they catch the feds catch him downloading child P. And one of the detectives said it's like one of the top five worst pictures he has ever seen. It's just disgusting. And Josh is now serving 12 years in prison. He, mm -hmm. when he was out waiting for trial, if I remember correctly, he was not allowed around his children unless he had supervision. But Anna stuck with him. And when he gets out, and this is a rhetorical question, and, and if you don't know the answer, just give me your opinion. When he gets out, is he going to be allowed to go live with her again? Because she'll welcome him with open, open arms. <laughs> My understanding, um, and I have to revisit the actual, you know, final sentencing, um, but I believe he has a 20 year probation that will be placed upon him upon his eventual release. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll probably serve roughly 10 years of the 12 and a half year sentence um, just because of the way federal, you know, they do serve about 85 percent, I think, of their sentences. Right. Usually. He um, my understanding from the probation would be a 20 year probation and he will not be allowed around. I think any minor children when he's out, ex again, unless he's supervised. But as you point out, his his uh, joyfully available wife will be a brainwashed wife will be the babysitter for him, you know, more or less. Um, the, the, the saving grace may be that at least several of his seven children should have become adults by the time he gets out or be really close to adulthood and this cult likes to marry them off young so maybe some of them will be out but let's hope oh my gosh and i just want to touch on this real quickly that kibby said uh the two daughters um who are art by him were made to feel like they did a bad thing and they were at fault and remember they went on megan kelly mm -hmm. and uh josh and not Josh, sorry, uh, it, Jenna and who was the other one? I apologize. Jessa and Jill. Jessa and Jill, sorry. Jessa and Jill went on Megan Kelly to defend him. Now, in this documentary, it's Jessa they interview, right? Or is it Jill? It's Jill. Jill. When they interviewed Jill, she said she was forced to go on there to save the show, and she didn't want to. And that is disgusting. Real quick, V Team Paranormal, you are so kind. Um, Thank you for the super chat. And she asked, do you think Josh essayed his own young daughters? It wouldn't surprise me. And it wouldn't surprise me if Anna just was oblivious to it. What do you think, little Texan? Do you think she would? he would do that? Are you there? Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Little Texan? I, I certainly hope not. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. 
Sorry, you know I, I think I lost. Yeah, I think I lost you for a minute. But go, yeah, um, go ahead. you know, obvious, obviously, I, I certainly hope not. Obviously, nobody wants to speculate on that. Um, but you can't help but wonder if that could have happened. And 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 his uh, very young siblings, um, the little girl siblings who were not yet born when he had done, right you know, when he'd molested four of the other ones, uh, four of the older five. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's every time they show that either in the documentary or I've just seen that clip so many times. They had it in this documentary that that scene where he's announcing, you know, he and Anna are going to go to Washington, D.C. to take that job that he got with the Family Research Council and Josie's sitting on his lap. Now, granted, oh, you can God. see his hands in that scene. But how many times has Josie sat on his lap? She was probably three or four, you know. Exactly. And when you hear the detectives only slightly describe what Josh was looking at. There's no doubt of the age, the young age of the pictures that he was downloading. Everybody, we're talking to Little Texan about the documentary on Amazon Prime called Shiny Happy People. It is about the Duggars, their uh, TLC program, 19 Kids and Counting, and also about something that we haven't heard a lot about. And I hope this exposes the IBLP. This is the Institute in Basic Life Principle with Bill Gothard. Okay, Little Texan, you, I know you've taken massive notes about this four-part series. I just, I want to cut you loose and just start telling us about the, the shocking things that you found in this series. And and that will probably lead into Bill Gothard as well. So go ahead, my dear. I, okay. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. <laughs> Well, yeah, even when you're as enmeshed with uh, following these types of cults as, as people like me who have no life are, um, I <laughs> there were some some nuggets of information and some outright just very stunning things that came out in this documentary. But I think um, obviously I'm very glad that the public is getting to hear about this, the public who wants to know about it. Um, right. I hope that people who either thought they were fans of families like this or this type of belief system, which is, again, this is not Christianity as a normal Christianity. This is a cult. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, the IBLP is not, we're not attacking an entire religion. This exactly. is an oppressive cult. And right. the victimization of the women and girls in particular, um, it's horrifying. And I hope that the public who didn't know about this will realize sort of like maybe a lot of people did with Scientology. They very cleverly did cut in some uh, Tom Cruise promotional video yeah. stuff. And you see the similarities, you know, just the weird wild eyed looks. And uh, yes, that was uh, certainly something to behold. I think some of the really shocking things might've been, uh, I, I maybe Trisha, you noticed this. This was very disturbing to me, among many other things. But you know, they talked so much right out of the gate about um, children bringing shame to their parents, mm -hmm. and you get this as a through line throughout the IBLP and and the Duggars and the Bateses and all these other families. That it's really about how they look to the public because. Of course, nobody would want to have a son like Josh and what he was doing. That's horrifying. But I'd like to think that a regular person who didn't care so much about how they look to their neighbors and to the public and to their church and whatever would have really genuinely cared about their son and their daughters and would have really tried to get him real help instead of sending him to like manual labor camp with the IBLP. Mm -hmm. But they care so much. And there was this woman, I think maybe you probably saw this in the documentary, who was just, it's just, oh. She was in one of their promotional videos and she said, she's very in that weird high pitched sing song voice talking about how when her eighth born child was so, so difficult at 14 months old. She just didn't know what to do with him. And she just spanked him and spanked him and spanked him until he stopped crying. And it would take all day. Wait, wait who said, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Who said this? I should have written down her name in oh, okay. my notes. But, but she yeah, was, she was uh, part of this. She was yeah, part of Yeah, okay. she was one of those IBLP promotional, you know, like oh. the conferences that, that, Michelle would go to those. It wasn't yeah. Michelle in this case, but it was some other woman just like that. And just sweetly yeah. talking to these crowds about, you know, sort of like how Michelle talked about the blanket training, which again, I knew about that. Other people who are weirdly interested in this 
cult know about this, but I don't think the general public would know. And Why that should you? be incredible. It's horrifying to me. And I knew about it. Okay. And let's, and I want to get back to this woman, but let's talk about the blanket training. And this is something Michelle talks about that she did explain what blanket training mm -hmm. is. So she did talk about it in at least one of their books. Um, it comes from those horrible people, um, the pearls, and they wrote that book to train up a child, which is trash and actually has led to children being literally starved to death. That's a separate issue um, because of the training of infants, but and feeding. But this particular issue is you have to break. I think I wrote the note somewhere, but it's something about breaking the rebellious spirit of a child. And again, we're talking about infants, little tiny babies. Okay. Curious about the world, need that stimulation to grow, need tummy time, need to, obviously you don't want them sticking their hands in the socket and all that. But I mean, you, you want them to explore their world. I mean, you, I, I think you do. I, I certainly wanted my children to. Right. So, you know, the, the blanket training is you take the baby and you put it on a blanket. So this is a baby that is, I guess, somewhat mobile. You know, this is, starts when they're like cr crawling or scooting or rolling and you put a toy or some sort of object or something fuzzy or whatever that rattles just outside of the blankets perimeter. And when the baby goes to, of course, get the toy, you smack the baby. You I'm smack. Sorry, I'm going to start foaming. Here, here's why I start foaming. They, they teach child abuse. Mm -hmm. You don't hit a damn baby for God's sake. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, that's, it's sickening, you know, and it's, and so Michelle does her little things like you, we teach the baby, you don't leave the, yeah, well, you know how they teach the baby, how they don't leave the blanket, they hit the baby. So they hit the baby. And of course you do that enough times, the baby is like, well, obviously I'm going to get hit if I keep reaching for this item. So the idea is you train them to stay on the blanket so that I guess the mother can then be joyfully available or something. I don't know, but you have to keep the baby on there and you have to keep, you know, these children are all abused into what they appear to be on television, the little robots that they become and the other XLB, XIBLP members who are in the documentary, not just Jill, you know, some of the others who are maybe a little bit farther out from the brainwashing than she is even, you know, mm -hmm. they talked about, yes, it's about beating them until they break their will like that poor man who was saying that, you know, his mom beat him for what was it a full, it was a really long time hours, I think, mm -hmm. um, when he was a boy, uh, maybe not a baby, but he was a young boy, because he was in her, I guess, rebelling in her mind, and she beat him to break his will. And this is this is what TLC was showing you the shiny, happy people. And this is what they were doing behind the scenes. And they damn well knew it because they talked, they admitted to blanket training their kids. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, um, little Texan, you're doing a great job. I mean, this, this is so revealing. And so this woman in the documentary, we don't know her name, but it, it was at one of those conferences that Michelle goes to. And this is where she admitted to, like you just said, beating her kid, right? Rather proudly stated I, I had to rewind it a couple of times because at first i couldn't hear the first part of what she said about which child it was i wasn't and then i rewound it she's like when my eighth born so again this is a woman who's had multiple children this is certainly not baby number one it doesn't come with an instruction manual i don't know what to do not that you should be any kid at any time but she's had seven other kids right so she has baby number eight and she just so sweetly is oh my goodness that baby i just didn't know what to do with him and you might think she's talking about like a uh, i don't know a snarky teenager or something yeah, yeah she's somebody talking does. about a 14 yeah. month old baby and she said she just didn't know what to do with him he just wouldn't listen wouldn't obey wouldn't bend to her will and so she just spanked him all day long until he stopped crying yeah, he stopped crying because he probably couldn't cry anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, babies come to a point when you beat them, they become hoarse and they mm -hmm. can't even cry. They Their will is broken mm -hmm. and their mind is changed and messed up for life. Again, my friends, this was the Duggars. This is what they this is what they listened to. They practiced the blanket training theory and um, 
and TLC presented them as normal, sweet Christian people when they were anything but. Okay, uh, little Texan, please continue. Just keep going with your thoughts because this is fascinating. Okay. Um, well, so some of the basics of IBLP, um, which is Bill Gothard's uh, cult <laughs> that yeah. he invented, um, you know, the seven basic principles are design, uh, authority, responsibility, ownership, suffering, freedom, and success. Uh, he has this system called the umbrellas of protection. Now, just to kind of make a little joke here, when you think about an umbrella, I've always tried to figure out why do they need multiple umbrellas? If I have an umbrella over my head, assuming my umbrella isn't actually broken, don't I just need the one to protect you me? Think. You would think. Not in Gothard world. You have the main umbrella, which is basically, I guess, over Gothard. But within that, in each family, the umbrella goes over, of course, the headship of the family. And of course, the headship of the family is, of course, the man, the husband. Of course, yes. And then under his umbrella is another umbrella for the wife. And under that umbrella is another umbrella for the children, but they're all under that one umbrella of the dad. I don't know why we would need all those other umbrellas. So if you get, if you step out from under an umbrella, if you're pulled out by Satan, I guess, from another umbrella, mm -hmm. uh, you risk really bad things happening to you. And that's what Jill, you know, was talking about as well in the documentary that, you know, she was so terrified that if anything didn't go according to what they were told, then something bad would happen. And as she said, it also brings people in because, look, it sounds really enticing as a parent, especially a parent maybe with multiple kids, to have someone say, I have all the keys to success, which is what Gothard would say. Mm -hmm. at, his, at his seminars. He would suck them in. I can make your life simple and easy and parenting will be a breeze. Who doesn't want to hear that? I of mean, course. obviously, you know, mm -hmm. whether, whether, whatever religion you may or may not be, it sounds wonderful, but not so wonderful, especially for the women and children. And, you know, those keys to success involve a lot of beatings. And you might also recall another really disturbing scene in the documentary where that very, very creepy pastor, uh, I believe he, it wasn't Gothard, but it was some other ma old man, um, gets the little boy up on stage for encouragement, which people who may have watched 19 Kids and Counting over the years heard a lot of words like, we're going to encourage someone. Well, we now know how sinister that word is too. That's basically their word for corporal punishment. Mm hmm. And, and talk about that kid on stage. So he is trying to do a demonstration, I guess, to teach parents, you know, oh, this there's such a godly way to beat your kid, basically, yeah, right. to spank your child and to get them to obey. And he brings some little, you know, little boy up and is like, oh, well, you've been very naughty. So I'm going to spank you. And, you know, bends him over and he starts spanking him while he's saying, but you're going to be such a good man one day and you're going to do great things. And he's spanking him. And then he's like, so now give your dad a hug. And the kid kind of hugs him and he says, oh, well, you didn't do much. You didn't really put yourself into that hug. So you're going to get some more spanking. And the what I think is really, truly the most chilling part of this is the entire time he's doing this, you hear the congregation or audience just busting out laughing. Like it's the funniest thing they've ever seen. Are you, you guys, when you see this on Amazon's docuseries, Shiny Happy People, uh, what Little Texan is describing, it's chilling because this is a huge auditorium, isn't it? It's huge. Mm-hmm. And they have so many followers. It's unbelievable. Okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, please continue. I hope I'm not uh, throwing you off track here. It's just everything you, you are saying is making me just crazy. So No, please. not at all. There's a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> he, um, so, yes, at, to that point, Gothard at his, in his heyday in uh, the 80s and 90s, I guess, mostly, he was selling out stadiums you know uh, big conference halls um conference centers hundreds of people they uh, now this this is of course coming from his organization but you know mm -hmm. it might actually be somewhat true they claimed in the documentary that the iblp says over two million people over the years attended his basic seminars and other seminars that he presented and of course he said he was just doing it as a ministry and for the good of the families 
bear in mind, this is a man who never married, never had children, had sex scandals of his own. That's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. He was a pedophile himself later on. Um, yeah, just doing it as a ministry, but he'll sure take your cash. He'll take your money. Okay. And that is another parallel with Scientology. You know, oh, yes, we have the answers for you. Just sign up here and hand me a big wad of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And as Candy Williams points out, there were over two dozen women who accused Gothard of harassment and said he molested them. He had to take a leave of absence. And in this docu-series, uh, and I'm sure you remember this little text, and they are talking to a woman who was one of his, you know, helpers. Their, her parents sent her to be with Gothard over the summer. Mm -hmm. And he liked them. Uh, he kind of liked them around 11, 12, 13, right around there. And, um, and he, he abused her. And she talks about how she was basically served up to him mm -hmm. by her parents. And just think of how many, what a, have you ever heard of any charges being brought against him or is it just too late or do you know? I mean, he was forced out of the organization. You know, he's no longer officially affiliated with it and they took him off the board and all of those sorts of things. And he's, mm -hmm. I think, in his 80s now and sort of in a state of disgrace in that sense. I think, unfortunately, what they alluded to in the documentary about the statute of limitations running on at least most of those cases was probably true. I don't recall if they got him on anything, you know, even they may have gotten him in some of the civil suits, I think. Mm -hmm. um, he, yeah, he's not in jail or anything like that or in prison. Um, but yes, he, he did accomplish that chilling mission, at least for a time of creating, you know, every, every husband was, was a cult leader and every family was an island, I think is how they put it and something like that in the documentary. And he yeah. created a culture of cult leaders and predators. And that was, and he was not putting that money back into you know, ministry or whatever we want to say. He was grifting properties from local officials, local city officials all around the, the world, it turns out. Um, public dollars being they would give him building spaces and he had you know private jets. He had the finest of everything. All that money from these, frankly, in many cases, extremely hand to mouth poor families who are living this quiverful lifestyle that he's you know, again, man with no kids of his own, no wife, and he's telling them you need to have as many children or blessings as God will give you. That's quiverful. And that's expensive. Even if you're very, you know, frugal, you right. keep popping out kids, you're going to be poor. The Duggar's first house, the one you, you know, we didn't get to see all those years was two bathrooms and approximately 2,400 square feet. They didn't move out till they were on kid number 15 or 16. Good God. Oh my God. Uh, and where, do you know where it's at? And I'm not, I can't even remember if it said this in the docu-series. Where are Jim Bob? I just say his name like that just because I can't <laughs> do anything to him. And it just sounds, <laughs> it just makes me feel better. Where Jim, Bob, and Michelle are now, are they making money? I mean, they took the money from the kid, from all the kids' hard work in the in the uh, TLC series, both of them. Do you know what they're doing now? That is a great question, Trisha. Um, they are, well, as you know, he tried to run for Senate, of all things, um, or state yeah. Senate, I guess it was. And he actually. lost. Like, yeah, he or, lost by a lot um, during josh's you know trial like they hadn't even reached a verdict yet and he's running for this office and they also tried unsuccessfully to run jed one of the other boys he lost um for the whatever race that was he was trying to get into uh what are they doing for money i assume they still speak at certain conferences um although iblp is officially not really a thing anymore oh. they still have those ati conferences those still happen i think they just recently had one what, um what is an ati conference oh sorry that's um one of bill's other acronyms um so so back to the homeschooling for just a second when sure. we say it's not homeschooling like normal homeschooling it's not it was called the advanced training institute which was or ati which was the homeschooling curriculum 
that Bill Gothard sold. Okay. He sold it. You had to buy it. You actually had to buy it, if I remember correctly. And he, that's mm -hmm. how he made oh, yeah. money. So, yep. so they're not having, and this is great news, they're not having those great big stadium filled type uh, meetings anymore at, under Bill Gothard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's something, at least. That is something. But let's, <laughs> let's talk about when they said world domination in this docuseries, mm. I was like, what? And then they pointed out, as we pointed out earlier, that, um, you know, that you would run for school board. It's only the men run for school board, run for state uh, legislature. Now, the one guy that and they, but the whole point was to get government control mm -hmm. so they could send us back to the 20s and 30s and make women subservient, make it a law. That's what they want. That's what they want. Don't mm -hmm. let anybody fool you. Now, the closest they got uh, was to a guy named, uh, let's see, his name was Representative Madison Cawthorn from a Republican from North Carolina. Now, do you know much about him or should I, should I read this article, uh, Little Texan? Oh, no, you go ahead, Trisha. Okay. Um, he served one term in Congress representing North Carolina. And, and this is an article. Let me tell you where it's from. And I'll put it in the, it's a Charlotte Observer. And I'll put it, the link in the description. Okay. And he was given screen time in the new docuseries, Shiny Happy People, Duggar Family Secrets. Cawthorn's seven minutes of fame in the series comes during the fourth episode, Arrows Activated. It describes his connection to Generation Joshua, a division of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Now, again, we're not talking normal homeschooling. What th this homeschooling does, in my opinion, is indoctrinate, indoctrinate. They don't teach science the way science should be taught, among other things. Anyway, uh, this group that intends to bring up conservative Christian homeschoolers to become part of the government, hence world domination. That's not in the Charlotte Observer. That's me saying it. Anyway, this is according to Alex Harris, a former leader of the group who now opposes it, and he is in the documentary. Uh, the Joshua generation is one of the most ambitious plots of modern evang evangelical history, and almost no one has ever heard of it. Harris, an attorney, said it's decades long, multi generational plan to raise an elite strike force of Christian homeschooled graduates to infiltrate the highest levels of government. And so far, Cawthorn was their largest success. Now, here's the problem. Cawthorn spent two years in Congress and, you know, he was at the pulpit, of course, you know, pushing for any, any anti-choice law he could come up with and all of that. And, you know, opposing anything that wasn't a traditional family. And then, of course, it comes out because it comes out that, he had been uh, basically, uh, let me let me find it here. It doesn't say here. It just said that he, because of scandals, uh, let me find it here. Uh, because he was um, several women accused him of, of sexually aggressive behavior, sexual misconduct, and sexual assault. Okay. So again, friends. When you raise somebody in a cult like this that makes sex so dirty and disgusting and horrible, and you lead the little boys to think that they can't control themselves, but you give them all the power over women, this is what they're going to do. And this is what this representative did. And uh, he did not uh, go back for another term in Congress. He was done, but they got close. And that is very scary in my opinion uh, what do you think in um little texan yes um that uh generation joshua uh whatever it's called <laughs> joshua yeah. generation uh that is very alarming um we we do under our constitution <laughs> have a separation of church and state mm -hmm. we're supposed to have freedom of religion yes freedom from that being forced on any religion right. being forced on us. Exactly. And so they do openly say they want Christian world domination, mm -hmm. but it's their version of Christianity. Yes. It's their 
interpretation of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And that involves a lot of subjugation of women and children. They don't just teach that men are superior. They teach that women are wildly inferior exactly. and cannot make choices for themselves. And yet somehow have to be responsible for the men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yet they're responsible for everything, but they're, they're totally inferior except for, mm -hmm. well, they're not, they're inferior no matter what. And let me stress this again. They are taught that the man has a right to demand sex mm -hmm. from the woman and mm -hmm. the woman does not have the right to refuse ever, ever. That's right. And the woman is not allowed to have pleasure. It's all about the man's pleasure, all about the man's pleasure. So anyway, um, so I, I just, uh, Let's see. Well, and uh, I'm going to read this. LMS 83 says, please don't believe everything you read about Cawthorn. Not everything is true. My family is really good friends with him, but I don't agree with a lot of what he's done. That is true. And LMS 83, I understand what you're saying. You're right. People come forward and say horrible things that aren't true. However, because he is in this ultra right wing conservative just scary world. And this is such a common happening, a, a common uh, thing that happens to the women in this world, because the men are told they are dominating the women and the women need to be subservient to them. It doesn't surprise me this happened. I will take your word for it that not all of it is true, but I have to believe that uh, a lot of it is. Okay. Uh, I, the fact that he didn't run again or, or he was either voted out, I can't remember, speaks volumes to me. Okay. Uh, if he could, he could prove it wasn't true, but the fact of what he has done is chilling and horrible. He wants to put me back in, literally back in the kitchen and not doing anything but being subservient to him. So I know he's a friend of your family's and I appreciate that. I dislike him immensely because of his politics and what he has done. But I take what you're saying and I appreciate you saying it and I'm glad you said it. So uh, please everyone take into uh, what L, I'm sorry, hold on one second here. What LMS 83 said, please take that into consideration when we're talking about uh, Cawthorn. So thank you very much. Oh my gosh. I am, again, I'm just, little text and I'm sitting here spitting. I am so angry, you know, and it just gets worse. This is a four part docu-series on uh, Amazon. What I hope this accomplishes is that nothing like this is ever presented as normal again. This is bull. I, and when you first saw it, little Texan, and mm -hmm. I you mentioned this at the beginning, but I want to talk about it a little bit more. You first saw it and you knew something was off right when you first saw 19 kids i think it was 14 kids and counting when it first started oh yeah, yeah. why is that well i mean i think at first you know you're just sort of fascinated by these large families but i grew up in a really rural town in illinois in farm country okay mm -hmm. so i had been around families that were large in fact there was one family in my town i think they did have 19 kids mm -hmm. um but this was very different those kids that i grew up around uh went to public school just like i did played with the other kids you know uh went to i think they were catholic but you know went to just a mainstream church in town um they weren't isolated from society they weren't, uh, you know, it was odd, maybe. It was sort of mm -hmm. like, well, that's a lot of kids, you know, but right. you, know, when you have a farm, you need a lot of help. But I also never got the impression that they were necessarily all parentified, which is a very serious form of child abuse. What, you know, so I think, well, I mean, I think that one of the things with the 14 kids and counting or, or, or expecting or whatever it was back in the day, right. um, I think one of the things that really, you know, immediately got my spidey senses up, it wasn't just that they had all these people in this tiny house. That's not good. Mm -hmm. But it was when, you know, Michelle so gleefully says, you know, well, I can't be everywhere at once. Okay, true. So um, I just, you know, take the baby for six months. And when I'm done nursing, I give it to the next 
you know, to the buddy who's going to be a girl, of course. Okay. And you saw these little girls and you saw Joy, who was four or five years old. Not just, and it's fine if you're helping your brother get his coat off or whatever, but th then doing everything in the house. Yeah, Michelle did with them. pretty much nothing. Right. She just, you know, these kids, it's like they said in the documentary. Mm -hmm. Please go. On, please continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like they said in the documentary about you know, a, an 11 year old should not be fully responsible for the night feedings of a infant. The 11 year old has her own needs. The 11 year old needs to be in school or at least regular homeschool with other kids. And you know, in regular homeschool, you go on field trips and you do other things. You don't just learn how to recite bible verses things like that you know and right she doesn't why they're t like the one lady said you know she had been parentified oldest of nine she was in the documentary she's like i was exhausted i was so tired because i was raising my siblings mm -hmm. exactly she okay. was she was raising her siblings she was forced to raise her siblings mm -hmm. um little texan we talked about this before the show, and we need to bring up what uh, Sterling HP Library has just said, mm -hmm. and we need to correct this. This person says, right-wing Christian circles are not going towards world domination. The world is chaotic and evil and needs more true Christianity, and sure seems like you are bashing it greatly. Would you like to take this first? I think you can yeah. speak to it better than I can, because I might lose my mind, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of the problem here, there's a few things. Okay, so part of the problem is there's a, a, a lot of what gets many of us upset is the hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. So I don't really care if Madison Cawthorn is a conservative Christian. That's fine. He's certainly entitled to do that. He's not entitled to force everyone else to do that any more than an atheist would be entitled to force everyone to be an atheist. Exactly. Um, also, if he's going to preach about the sins of pornography and then he's caught, I believe he was caught in some sort of lewd video, or I don't know if I would have called it lewd, but the media and the right wing, you know, people who supported him called it lewd mm -hmm. um, or he was dressed in women's clothing or something that his brand has taught is evil. It's just like with Josh Duggar. When he was part of the Family Research Council and he was railing about pornography and then we find out he's involved with this, you know, receiving and potentially distributing child sex abuse materials, that's not okay. That's not, it's wildly hypocritical. It's criminal. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also say that someone like Madison Cawthorn, as portrayed in this uh, documentary, the men, the boys are victims too. The boys are victims too. Now, when they become men, less of a victim in my mind. But mm -hmm. these kids are, this is abuse from a very young age. This is neglect. Yeah. This is parentification. This is not, how can you possibly have any time with your parents when there's 18 of you or 15 of you? Exactly. Uh, the boys are forced into very strict gender roles as well. And it, it's not just about being gay or straight or anything like that. I mean, they're, they're, told how they are to act they aren't allowed to show emotions the girls aren't either to be fair right, <laughs> but right. they, th this is abuse at a very young age so in many ways and and i would say this about young joshua too i mean emphasis on young joshua Dunn. they are victims too they were yeah. uh, they were subjected to corporal punishment they were sent away to dig a lake camp after being maybe that was a cry for help from josh duggar i don't know 13-year-old Josh Duggar, when he was saying what he had done, maybe he really is just evil, or maybe he really was saying, like, help me. Something's wrong with me. Exactly. And they it, do nothing except shove it to the side because, God forbid, that the family be seen as anything but perfect. Exactly. And and the thing is, when you say right-wing Christian circles are not going towards world, world domination, it's chaotic and evil. Well, you're saying that Christianity, Christianity is the only religion that can that can save it, and it, that's what needs to happen. Is they need to step forward and say, "Well, what about all the other religions? What about mm -hmm. my religion? What about my beliefs?" You yeah. know, and, and again, it's the absolute unbelievable hypocrisy. Now, this is not all Christians, and this is a point we have been stressing all night. We are not talking about all Christians. We are talking about 
these types of Christians that use their religion to control people and make it so uh, there is not equality for anybody. You know, they, they hate anything to do with gay people. All right. They, um, women are right. inferior. These are the Christians that we're talking about. And if you believe that Sterling HP, you are welcome to leave because I will not tolerate anybody coming in this chat. And you haven't said anything like that, but if this is what you believe, this isn't the place for you. I'm just going to tell you that right now because I won't tolerate it. Not for one second. The Christian people that I know and love, love everybody. And they don't mm -hmm. try and dominate women and they don't try and put them under their thumb and just use them for sex whenever they want and on and on and on. And they don't create predators like the Duggars and Bill Gothard have done and continue to do. So you're welcome to stay. Again, you never said anything like that. I'm just saying if that is how you believe, this isn't the place for you. If you would like to stay, I would love to have you. But. That's that's the opinion of this person running this live stream. So, OK, I do want to say I, I want to give, again, fair shout out here. Uh, WNC Granny says uh, I'm talking about uh, Cawthorn again. He was my district representative. I met him twice. I've never gotten those heavy right wing vibes from him. He's been in a wheelchair for a long time. So I question the allegations. Thank you, WNC Granny. I appreciate you telling us that. And again, we do welcome all sides, um, almost all sides, unless it's ridiculous. And I appreciate what you're saying. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Have I calmed down? Can anybody <laughs> tell? Do I need to go to the hospital yet? Just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me. Okay. Um, anyway, and I'll just tell you right now, anybody that uh, talks about negatively about gay people of any persuasion done with you done with you won't have it won't have it i'm sick of it there the gay population is so small and it they, these people don't harm you they don't do anything to you and they're being made out to be just these horrible monsters and they're anything but so I, that's all i'm gonna say uh, about that and uh little Texan, you know how I feel about that because I've like lost my mind on the phone with you about that. So, <laughs> you know all of that. Okay. So in in wrapping this up, little Texan, mm -hmm. you could just, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but heck, I will because I'm paying you so much money to do this, as you know. Sure thing. <laughs> I'll buy you coffee next time I see you. Okay. <laughs> um, if you could just maybe give us some bullet points on some of the shocking new stuff that we didn't know, like about the blanket training. That was new to me. It just things like that. If you can come up with a few things, that would be great. Sure. Well, I think, yes, the blanket training certainly was one and the use of the word encouragement, because I've watched uh, the, not just the Duggars, but the Bateses over the years, their show was uh, canceled last year, but they had a show on Up TV, uh, bringing up Bates for mm -hmm. several seasons. And there are a lot of scenes. First of all, Gil Bates, not to go down a totally different rabbit hole here, but he's still on the board of whatever is left of the IBLP. I mean, it sort of still exists. It's just not like this juggernaut, you know, stadium sellout type thing. And that homeschool curriculum that they were selling is basically now just sort of like available online. It's like Bible study, I think is what they're calling it now, uh, the mm -hmm. wisdom booklets. It used to be their entire curriculum that these families paid for. Um, so Gil Bates, it's really chilling to think back to some of the scenes where he would talk about like taking his, you know, youngest sons or whatever they were, I don't know, talking back or whatever. And, and not really, but sort of on, on an episode. And he'd say, I think you need some encouragement. And the whole family would laugh. Well, you know, we let watch that. I watch that. And I think, Oh, encouragement, like, you know, he's going to build them up or he's going right. to maybe even just talk to them. No, I think we know what encouragement means. Now encouragement means beat them hit them, spank them. And, you know, that's when Amy uh, King, who's the Duggar's cousin, I don't think she gave a lot of earth shattering insights, but she did give that one. And when she said that's what the Duggars would call it, you know, when someone was going to go get spanked or hit or whatever, something physical, they would say, um, you need some encouragement and they take them in another room. 
good God. And so, you know, I guess that. I was innocently thinking that they just met a good talking to, or maybe, maybe, a, maybe some Bible reading or something that would be, you know, pretty innocent. Mm -hmm. Nope. Unbelievable. So At that's one. Uh, I think, oh, sorry. Yeah. I think that some of the stuff the Holtz knew, um, and we knew some of that because Bobby had testified at um, Josh's trial. So we did know some of that had come up with that. That was shocking to me to learn that, you know, M Michelle and Jim Bob had had openly told them, yeah, mm -hmm. we weren't going to tell you about Josh. We were going to let him marry your daughter. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he was going to confide, which, I, you know, do you think he would have ever confessed to his wife or whatever? I mean, there's no way that would have happened. Right. Um, but that's what their plan was. And then the whole you know, the whole idea that he was um, somehow cured by all these little camps that they'd sent him off to. And it was mostly manual labor and public shaming, shaving his head, public humiliation. I mean, can't stand Josh Duggar, but I don't think that that was appropriate at age 13 or 14. What is that supposed to teach him? You know, just humiliate him in front of the siblings or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um the resentment factor. Um, I think Amy alluded to the fact that Jill may have actually physically hit Josh. That's Jill did not speak on that or really confirm that. And that's, I can certainly respect that she never wanted anyone to know about this. It's sure. tragic that, you know, that was all leaked. Um, but yes, it was very interesting that she pretty much admitted that maybe she and Jessa weren't, you know, held down and coerced to talk on Megyn Kelly, but it was made very clear that that's how the show would need to be saved. And mm -hmm. it always seemed really sickening that Josh didn't even appear in that Megyn Kelly thing. You know, he wasn't in jail then. Right. You know, he, he didn't even come out and he didn't say anything. He didn't come on and even, I mean, you and I know it would have been a fake apology, but he right. didn't even do that. He never showed his face. You know, and so then she, they have to go on. His victims have to go on and try to cover for him. And then the parents lying. I mean, just lying. That yeah. I'm sorry. I don't, that's not a tenet of Christianity. You're not supposed to lie. And Jim Bob does it over and over again. And just the audacity that he is. He had the show, as people pointed out. You know, he had this show. He knew all these secrets and skeletons mm -hmm. were in the family. And he was like, you know, we're going to do it anyway. Oh, because it's a ministry. But then we find out, no, not only did was he controlling all the money, which we knew, but he was conning the family, tricking them basically yeah. into signing contracts. They didn't know what they were for. And right. as Jill pointed out, I thought this was also a really interesting thing she pointed out. And again, it's deception and fraud. Mm -hmm. If people don't want to use, um, you know, religious terms about it, let's just go right. to the criminal terms. He, they were still listing most of the children as minor children, and most of them weren't even minor children at that point. I must, I missed that. Really? Yeah, that that was so. One of the contracts. So when she went back. You know, and said, you know, at first I thought maybe someone forged my signature. And then I said, no, no, that is my signature. And then she mm -hmm. was looking at like, the, you know, because when the kids were minors, the parents sign on behalf of them, which again, I could get into a whole thing about how that's child exploitation. And I don't think these, you know, anyone should be parading their children around TV anyway. They can't consent. Mm -hmm. But that aside, <laughs> they, right. um, they, uh, you know, had signs. So it would say like Michelle Duggar, and then it would say on behalf of minor children and list all those names. Well, you know, Jana, Jill, John David, a whole bunch of them that were listed on there weren't even minors at that point. They were adults. Mm -hmm. Right. That's amazing. And that's just, uh, that shocks me, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, but, but again, they list them as adults. I mean, they list them as minors because that's, they got to have the kids. It's the kids show, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, the kids are the draw. The women, the irony of all of this was the women and the children who are so heavily abused and subjugated and and looked upon as less than, they carried the show. Nobody was tuning in for John, David, and Josiah. I mean, they just weren't. Nobody right. was watching. We, literally, the little boys on that show, they were little then. We mm -hmm. all referred to them, uh, you know, like online as the Lost Boys. No, Most people didn't even know their names. Half of them don't know their names now. You know, they just weren't that interesting. We right. wanted to see the older girls. We wanted to see, you know, their lives. And yet they're the ones who the most was taken from and who had no future because they're not allowed to get jobs. They're not allowed to work without their headship's permission. And even then, if they get that, how are they going to have time after they're 
you know, birthing right. all these arrows <laughs> exactly. for the quiver. Exactly. I, well, there's there's two final things I want to touch on. First of all, Sterling HP Library says, I'm old. Me too. I'm old. And I understand what you're saying. Do we rent this documentary from Amazon? I never bought anything from Amazon. I can see why Josh turned out as he did. Uh, Sterling HP, it is a streaming platform called Amazon Prime. OK, and you need to join it. And, you, and what I'll do is I'll put the link to Amazon Prime in the description and you click on it, you join it. Usually they have a trial period for free and um, like seven days. And then after seven days, they charge you whatever it is a month. Um, what I would do if you want to see this documentary is join Amazon Prime. If they have again, I'm not sure if they do, if they have the, the free trial. And then as soon as you watch the uh, Duggars, Shiny Happy People, then cancel and say you don't want Amazon Prime. And that way you're not charged anything. I think they still have that. But I will put the link in the description after this show, because believe me, I know how difficult it is with all these light, with all these streaming platforms. And where do you go? You know, what happened to NBC, ABC and CBS and PBS? That's all we had growing up, you know. And now we have to learn all these other things and all these other great shows are on Apple TV. And how do you get Apple TV if you don't have Apple? Oh, my God. Ah. So Sterling HP, I completely understand completely. So we'll, we'll hopefully be able to help you there. Uh, JDR had a great comment that I, I left up for a long time. Um, and uh, that was, why do people join these cults? Well, I think there's two reasons. First of all, they're indoctrinated at a very young age. Why would a woman join this cult like the Duggars and be subservient their whole lives to men? I, do you know how miserable it is being stuck in a house with no options and no choices and having your husband being able to demand sex whenever he wants and, and you have nothing other than to... to you know, you can't go out and get a job. You can't have a hobby. You can't do these things. And you think, why do they do it? Well, they're indoctrinated very young, number one. And number two, if they're not indoctrinated very young and they join as they're older, they're searching for something. They want to be made, uh, a, they want to be welcomed into a part of something. And and I think, especially women, if they join a cult, if they join a cult like this at an older age, like in their teens or early 20s, I think it's because they have no self-esteem and they need help and they need love and they think they're going to get it from these, these people. And they're not, they're going to be used horribly, horribly, horribly. So at insightful, excuse me. Um, I'll get to you insightful one. Thank you for waiting patiently insightful one, but little Texan, I want to give you the final say final thoughts on shiny, happy people, the Duggar secrets. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, well, my final thoughts would just be, I really do hope that if anyone is interested in, you know, learning more, um, that they watch it, it, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's kind of a surface level thing. Um, I hate to say that because there's a lot in it. There's a lot more out there, unfortunately, as there often is with cults, but you know, this is season one, maybe they'll get into some of the other families. I believe I saw a statement today from Olivia Plath, um, supporting that this docuseries had come out because her family, I, although they may not have been IBLP, uh, very similar type of upbringing, and she is deconstructing from that. Now, uh, now who, who is that? It's uh, there was a. I, this is actually a show I didn't watch, but it's a show called Welcome to Plathville, mm -hmm. and it's another um, large, not as large as the Duggars, but large. Um, cult family um and a lot of people are coming out saying that you know this was their their family upbringing and it was abusive and it's not you know a normal type of upbringing and despite what many may think they do not all turn against all religion some might that certainly might be a path they take a lot of them don't jill is still very much a christian Mm -hmm. She's just not in that cult. She and uh, Derek, actually, her husband, they have a book coming out uh, in January, Counting the Costs. They're going to go more in depth. Mm -hmm. um, so we may get some more from that as well. Um, but I do hope it opens people's eyes because these this sort of indoctrination and brainwashing and isolation and fear mongering and shame is just not okay. Child abuse is not okay. 
under any umbrella of anything, Absolutely. Uh, under, under any circumstance. Uh, so I, you know, I hope that people will take from that what they will. I did see a comment about don't watch the shows. It gives them money. That's true. Um, I don't think I knew that back in the day, how much money they were getting. I also right. thought they were weird, but not necessarily criminal. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of us thought that, you know, they're strange, but they have all those mouths to feed, you know? So I guess if they're making some money, it's fine. But, you know, little, little did we know. Um, mm -hmm. As far as the docu-series, if they're paying Jill something, I'm, t I'm fine with that. You know, I'm not, I'm not a fan girl, but, you know, she was brave enough to come on there and talk. Mm -hmm. um, that's something. Yeah. And she does love her parents. She has come out and said that she is not against Christianity nor her parents. Mm -hmm. She loves her parents. Right. But she isn't going to continue to live a lie or right. to cover up for abuse because under any circumstance that is just not okay. No. Exactly. And yes, it was her brother. She probably loves Josh in some way too. I mean, yeah. he's her brother, exactly. but it's, you can't defend that. There's no, no defense of that in any circumstance. So that was it. And then um, if it's okay, I did want to mention a couple of podcasts. Oh yes. Let's talk about those. And you sent me the links and I'm going to put these up in the description, everybody. These podcasts are great. So they're not, continue. I have no affiliation with them. I don't know the people who, who run them. I just enjoy them. So, and there are others out there, but um, so one, some of your listeners or viewers <laughs> may have, um, may have heard of or, or even listened to, which is the Leaving Eden podcast. It is not Duggar specific. Mm -hmm. um, Sadie Carpenter is an uh, ex-evangelical Christian from a different subsect. And she has described her upbringing as being very cult-like. It is mm -hmm. not the IBLP. She does a lot of in-depth uh, with her with her co-host um stories about all different aspects of um uh like religious manipulation and control and abuse um and things like that it is it's not a bashing podcast it's just really about exposing the hypocrites and the cult leaders mm -hmm. and things like that and she they do talk about the duggars but it's not just the duggars and then the other one that i really enjoy um is a newer podcast from a, a couple um and it's called uh, Digging Up the Duggars uh, or Digging Up the Duggars Pod. It's kind of cute. Um, and it's this husband and wife team who uh, they recap the episodes. They actually have like the old DVDs of the 19 kids. But more to the point, they go through and they do deep dives on things like the IBLP and Bill Gothard and specific victims um, who've come forward and and other abuses that have gone on. And just things about the Duggars that you didn't see on the show. And they do a lot of research on that. And I just highly recommend it. That one is Duggar specific and IBLP specific. So probably not as interesting if people want more like broadly cult <laughs> information, right. but, um, but it's, it's really worth a listen and they do a lot of research to go into it. And again, they are not anti anyone or anything. They just are trying to get some information out there and inform the public because, you know, there are always families out there. Y'all may remember the Turpin family was not IBLP, oh, but something like right. this. I just read about a, a similar unfortunate situation recently. I think it happened. I don't remember which state, but another one of, you know, chained up kids. I don't know that they were in some sort of cult, but these types of things, unfortunately still go on. So yeah. we have to put light on them and uh, absolutely, we can't let these predators continue to suck in the vulnerable. They mm -hmm. suck in vulnerable people and then they turn them into predators. They do to little predators. That's as they said in the docu-series, shiny, happy people. Little Texan, once again, you have outdone yourself. You are one of our most amazing guests that we have on here. And I swear I could talk to you every night about these topics. You are incredible i will put the links to the podcast that little texan just mentioned i put them in chat i'll also put them in the description and uh when we have any updates on josh or the duggars or uh bill gothard or any of these people you know we're going to have you right back <laughs> thank okay? you trisha i very thank much appreciate you. it thank you so much i'll call you later my dear okay great take care now bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Oh my God, wasn't she amazing? Debbie Rogers, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the super chat. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, I, I left a uh, a comment up there that said, how do, how do women get out of these cults? Well, the problem is a lot of times they don't even know they're in a cult. And if you know somebody that's being abused, 
do everything you can, you know, call the police, say she's being abused by her husband. Um, you know, if that's the case, don't lie, but, uh, you know, get, give them, give them a place to go, but it's so hard to break away. And you, you should, I, I know there are experts out there. You can Google, you can find all kinds of groups that can help you if you know somebody in a situation like this. So, oh, it's just so maddening. Absolutely so maddening. And just, uh, again, it really upsets me just watching that, those four episodes. Uh, abs I can't even tell you. I mean, if you thought I got upset tonight, you should. Um, JDR, I can I can actually email them to you because I've got them in email and I'll put them in the description, JDR, but I'll I'll email you the podcast, okay? So, oh boy. Anyway. Um so how 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 did you think that uh went? Have you had a chance to watch it by chance? I've just watched the first two episodes. Yeah, it's yeah. maddening, isn't it? Yeah. Very maddening. So Anyway, um, okay, so there is something else I want to uh, talk about tonight, a few other things. First of all, thank you uh, for the donations. We are, um, again, in a dire situation. Oops, this is the wrong thing. So even if it's a dollar, I'm telling you, if like a third of people in chat could donate a dollar, oh, we would be so, so happy. Because this is the only way we can keep going is on your incredible generosity. And we will be reading uh, the donations from PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo here in just a little bit. I'm going to put these up here. If you can donate something tonight, I can't tell you. If you can donate something to Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal, it would really, really help me without getting into anything personal here. It is a situation that um, if you like this, if you like this channel and you have a dollar and if you can donate it, great. However, I understand a dollar is a meal and I don't expect anybody to give up anything that they can't afford to do so, only if you can afford to do so. However, it's absolutely free to hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, to hit the subscribe button. That will help us tremendously. And if you could get the word out about this podcast, that will help us out too, okay? Hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. That would be fantastic. Okay, one other thing I wanna talk about here, and let me get to it. Let me just put this up here real quick again. Here is the PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App info. Okay, um, this is like my fear of flying. What happened yes. recently? Uh, hold on one second here. Let me find it. Do, do, do. Oh, 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 one other thing. Two other things, actually. You know Mike Rinder? Our, uh, yeah. Yeah that incredible guest that we had on uh, and wrote the book, A Billion Year Contract about Scientology, he has advanced esophageal cancer. So if you could uh, please uh, give some positive energy, a prayer, whatever you can do, keep Mike Rinder in your thoughts. He's battling this with everything he's got. So please, let's just, uh, let's just keep him in our, in our prayers. Okay. Thank you. Laura G. Thank you so much for the super chat. That is very sweet of you. I really do appreciate it. Um, here is a YouTube channel that talks about it and I'll put this in the description as well. Okay. So there's, a, there's one other story I do want to talk to you about. If you can just hang on just a moment. Dee, 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 I will sing to you. I will sing to you. Okay. And um, by the way, we forgot to play. Did Trisha put her teeth in? And the answer yes. is no, I didn't. But I will tomorrow. I promise. I promise. I promise. Okay. Let me grab this other. Um, this other one. Let me find it. I'm just going to be the rumors. New crossword. Where did it go? Where'd it go? Oh my gosh. Hold on. I got to find it. Can you read a few comments while I find this, my dear? Yes. Thank you. Lillian Gill says PayPal alert. 
Oh, thank you. Oh, I will go look at PayPal here in just a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amethyst Pisces says, thanks for bringing awareness to these people or about these people, they say. Mm -mm. Okay, I've got it. This is one of my fears of flying. And that is, uh, you know, when you go and, and you lose cabin pressure and the oxygen masks come down. Well, I'm always worried that that's going to happen and we're just all going to pass out. And I've never flown. I've flown in a small plane before, but never like in a private jet. And I think this is what happened to that golfer, Payne Stewart. This just happened, and this is terrifying. It's the owner's daughter and granddaughter of this jet company. And the title is Pilot of Unresponsive Private Jet that Crash was killed for um, and killed for were seen slumped over. So what happened was this jet started flying really high, like, and it was a small private jet. It was like 36,000 feet. Well, that's what you go when you have a big jet, you know, when you have a 747 or whatever, one of the bigger planes. And if you go that high, I think if you go that high in a small plane, not good. Well, and what happened was this jet just started, this private jet just started going through protected airspace around Washington, D.C. So they scrambled some jets and they were able to see that the pilot and um, the mother and her little like two-year-old daughter and the nanny were all slumped over. And they think what happened was something happened. The, the jet um, lost all its, you know, what did I just call it? Decompression or whatever. It um, went too high. And uh, it was just flying around. And uh, they followed it. Hypoxia, that's what it's called. It's a shortage of, of oxygen in the blood. And they think that's what happened here, uh, that that's what happened to everybody, that, that something happened and oxygen wasn't able to get into this jet, the Cessna Citation. And it crashed in Virginia and there's nothing left of the plane. And they have found very little human remains, hardly anything left of the plane. And it's just so tragic, you know. Uh, I ju it just, that flying scares me. And when I hear this, it just terrifies me. And it's so tragic because the owner of this jet of this company, that was his daughter and granddaughter. And, uh, oh my God, I just, I can't imagine. So anyway, I'll put this link up in the description. I'll put it in chat right now. If you ever become a rock star, Please do me a favor. Do not get on a private small plane ever, yeah. ever. N not a rock, not even a rock star, any sort of music person. Do not get on a small jet. Get a 747. Ask John Travolta to bring you a 747 and fly you. How many times have we heard? I mean, yeah. we can start with the, you know, uh, the big bopper and what's his face, Buddy Holly, and just go from there. Richie Valens, he was on there as well. Yeah. Ricky Nelson later. I mean, we can go on Leonard Skinner on and on. There was a group Montana that were fantastic. And they crashed in a small plane. So please, if you ever become a famous singer of any sort, fly commercial, fly first class, stay in a big sure. I'm yeah. serious. It's <laughs> just Kathy weird. Klein, Aaliyah, all yeah. kinds. Aaliyah was so young. But so was Richie Valens. He was right. like 17. Um, Ping the router says it wasn't a small jet. It was a Cessna. It was a private one, uh, but not a teeny. Oh, it wasn't a teeny four seater. But yeah, it, when I say teeny, I'm talking like it's not huge, you know, like it doesn't seat like a hundred people or anything. So, but um, maybe it could go as high as 36,000 feet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. You should know that. <laughs> yeah, Patsy <laughs> Klein. There's another one. I mean, we go on and on and on and on and on. So do keep that in mind. Okay. I want to get to the um, PayPal here. Okay. 
Dun, bum, 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 bum. And I'll give you an update on some guests we have coming up and all that good stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Gail R., thank you. Thank you, Gail R. And uh, Nancy R. and Lillian Gail, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, Candy Williams, you are the best. And the reason why I say um, uh, your name is because you say it in chat. So, and uh, Jeannie Phipps, thank you very, very, very much. I do appreciate it. And I see a refund here. But I'm not sure what that is, so I'm not going to thank the person just yet. In fact, I will call them to see what's going on. So hang on here. So thank you. Thank you. So you guys have, I can't tell you, that right now has saved me. Absolutely saved me tonight. So um, now let's go here. Oh, my gosh. Trisha S., thank you very, very, very much. And Jennifer T., thank you. Both of you are great supporters of this channel, and I really appreciate the Venmo. Thank you. And let me go to Cash App. Cash App. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Thank you. Laura S., thank you very much, my dear. Thank you for the Cash App. Alicia M., you are the best. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, Kelly D. Gosh, I don't know what I'd do without you. Okay, you guys have, have saved me tonight. Thank you very, 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 very much. Okay. Um, the end of the world again. We will start that broadcast on July 21st at 1159 p.m. And it will go all the way through July 22nd until 1159, actually 12 a.m., on uh, July 23rd. Uh, we're getting some great guests lined up. And if you would like to help with the end of the world again, uh, I'll tell you what, I will put down producer at websleuths.com. You can email insightful one and, um, oops, trying to put insightful one, that wouldn't work. <laughs> at websleuths. Um, and I'll put this in the description as well. If you would like to help, you know, host at some point, like when I'm sleeping or whatever, or if you have any ideas of things we could do, that'll be fun for the end of the world. Again, that would be great. We are going to um, any money raised that day and hopefully we'll raise a lot. We'll go to Mike King from Profiling Evil. We'll go to his Children's Justice Center that is being built in Salt Lake City. This is all in honor of uh, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan and Tammy, Tammy Dayville. Okay. Cause that's the day 2020 that Chad and Lori said the end of the world was going to happen and they were going to leave that lead the 144,000 and they were a God and goddess. And you know, that's why they didn't worry about being in jail and worry about the kids' bodies being found on their property because they were going to handle it all because they were gods. And that night on 2020, we all stayed up together assured that the end of the world was going to happen. We were sure it was happening. We were going to end it together. Shockingly, it didn't happen. And every year on that day, just in case Chad got the a year wrong, we're going to broadcast 24 hours for the end of the world again. Okay, my darling true crime angels, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the uh, subscription. We would greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, I want to thank Moonlight View Ping the Router, and of course, Love and Coco. And we can't do it without you, Insightful One. So everybody, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night at 1030 Eastern on Web Sleuths YouTube Live. We love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.